Hello, my friends, Pastor Anna here. I get to share the Bible story and teaching. Let's invite God to be a part. Lord, we love you, love you, love you. And Holy Spirit, I pray you would speak through me and show us what you want us to learn that we can be more like you, Father. Bless my friends for being here. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. All right, so famous last words, and this story is about Jesus washes the disciples' feet, okay? So if you wanna look up this story in your Bible, it's actually found in John chapter 13, verses one through 17, okay? So you can look it up and read it for yourself, okay? So um, in this series, Jesus' Famous Last Words, um, we're gonna look at when one of the last times that he gathered with his disciples, like for, um, for a dinner, they call it the Last Supper. You've probably heard of it, right? Um, they were gathering to celebrate the Passover, the Feast of the Passover, but we call it the Last Supper because it was the last meal that he shared with them. So they're like hanging out, they're, they're at the meal, and all of a sudden, when they were at the table and they started to relax, um, Jesus got up and he removed his robe and he put a towel around him and then he got a bowl of water and they're probably like, what in the world is Jesus doing? I love the way you can never predict what Jesus is gonna do. He is unpredictable. He is always outside of the box and I love that. Um, so then he, be, he kneeled down and he actually began to wash his disciples' feet. Yes. Isn't that so cool? He began to wash his disciples' feet. See, this was a practice that went on. Usually, whoever was the servant of the household did this job because it was kind of a yucky job because um, people walked it. There were no cars. People walked everywhere they went, and they wore sandals, and their feet would get really, really dirty. And so usually, before they would even come in, a servant would wash the people's feet so the house didn't get so dirty. I mean, they didn't have vacuums back then, you know? And, um, and so Jesus starts to do this and, um, his disciples are shocked because they're like, I mean, Jesus, he is the son of God and he is doing a servant's job. Right. And Peter is like, no, Jesus, no, you, you can't do this. No, you no. And, and Jesus told him, no, no, this, please, this is what I must be done. And he actually told him, follow my example. I'm setting the example for you. Follow my example. And then he went on to teach that anybody that wanted to be greatest in the kingdom of God needed to be a servant first. So if you were gonna be a leader, you needed to be a servant. Isn't that so cool? So different, the kingdom of God, so different than the kingdom of the world. And that's exactly what we are going to learn about today. That if you want to be the greatest, you want to be in charge, you got to learn how to be a servant. Be a servant. So be a servant, guys. That's the title of our teaching today. Um, question, have you ever wanted to be the boss? Have you ever wanted to be in charge, large and in charge? I can be very bossy. <laughs> Definitely, I have a leadership gift God's given me. And, and, you know, I can in turn, you have to direct people when you're a leader. And sometimes, when I was a kid, I was so bossy, like in a bad way, like, definitely bossed everybody and could get on people's nerves. And even as an adult, some one time my husband, Mr. David, who's amazing, he said, Anna, I'm not one of your kids, stop, stop bossing me because <laughs> I'm used to just giving directions, right? So um, when you're in charge, you can be definitely, you know, used to giving directions and or just to that. So another question, have you ever wanted to be the greatest at something like the goat, greatest of all time? You know, my boys, we have three boys and they're friends and them, they will literally just talk about who's the greatest of all time. And they're kind of argue, you know, they'll be like, um, with like with basketball, they'll say Michael Jordan, you know, and they'll say different because there's players that played at different eras that never actually played against each other. So you don't really know who would be the greatest of all time. And they'll be like, Michael Jordan, no LeBron or, you know, or um, uh, Kobe, you know, and who would actually be if they were in their prime and played against each other, who would be the greatest of all time. And, you know, Jesus's followers actually 
actually would argue about this. Like, it's so funny. Their disciples actually argued who should be, who's the greatest. And um, they would argue <laughs> about that. Can you imagine? And that's probably one of the reasons why Jesus did this lesson for them because, and they would even say, hey, can we sit next to you? You know, when you're coming to your kingdom, we want to sit on your right and, you know, like be the vice president, you know, because we know you're the greatest, but we, we want to be next, you know? And so Jesus taught him this lesson. He said, um, if you want to be the greatest in God's kingdom, I must be a servant like Jesus. Because Jesus said that I'm giving you an example, do this, right? And if you want to be the greatest, then follow this example. So I must be a servant like Jesus. So Jesus, he was the king of all kings. He is the king of all kings. He's the son of God, but he didn't come asking people to serve him. No. And did he like wear, wear a crown everywhere and say, you know, no, he didn't. He was kind. He, um, he not only died for us, right? That's the mega servant washing people's feet. He would go around healing people that were sick, taking, he took all of his time unto other people. He was either spending time with God or ministering to people. And he was, he was taking time to talk to people too that, um, that other people would have thought were like not worth talking to. He made time for kids. There's a whole lesson about how they were like, the disciples were like, no, no, he doesn't have time for kids. And he's like, no, the kids, bring them to me. Um, they, they're very important. He would, he literally treated everybody with importance, you know, and did not um, make people treat him importantly at all. He was the prime example and gave his life, obviously, to the end, you know, dying on the cross. He was always serving other people. So I must be a servant like Jesus. The second one, if I want to be the greatest, is I must humble myself. You know, um, people think if you want to be the greatest, you need to be prideful, right? And they no, no, Jesus, he was so humble. And we must humble ourselves. He humbled himself to be the servant. We must humble ourselves, you know, and maybe take the lower job um, at whatever that is. I mean, I, do you know when I go through this building, even at church, if there's trash, I will pick up the trash. Any trash that there is, I pick it up. And whatever needs to be done, I'll do it. Straighten chairs, whatever needs to be done, I'm going to be, I'm willing to do it. And if I see it, then I'll do it. And, and it, that's how we need to be guys. We need to put ourselves in that position and go up. And if there's a new kid that nobody else will talk to, let me, I'm going to go up and talk to them. Whatever it is, we can humble ourselves and we can do it because that isn't who we are. That doesn't mean that we're lowly. No, we're being like Jesus. And, and, and when Jesus wants to promote us, I guarantee you, he will promote you. And that's what David did in the Bible. We talked about it. David was literally taking care of the sheep, which was like the lowest of the lowest job, but he was willing to do it and do it with a great attitude and do it with all of his heart. And God promoted him to king because he knew that he could be that servant leader. Guys, if you're going to be a good leader, you have to be willing to do whatever needs to be done with a great attitude. And you are the example to everyone around you, because really it's what we do more than what we say that shows everybody what to do. Okay. It's the truth. Um, like an ex like true. I will take out the trash. Trash needs to be taken out. I'm taking it out. A little girl threw up. I went right away. I'm like, I'm going to clean up this throw up. Even though I'm the head, I'm not going to say, Hey, you go clean that up. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever needs to be done. Um, so, and the last one is I must put others first me last. And that's what Jesus, he was setting the example with that. He wasn't going out trying to make himself the most, he wasn't doing anything for himself. Everything he did was for others and, and his time. And it's basically our time, our money and our talent we do for others. And, and, um, you know, what's cool about that though? We think, well, what about me? Because that's what the enemy wants you to go around going, what about me? What about me? What about me? Joyce Meyer has a, she's one of my favorite pastors and she'll have that thing where like, you know, it's kind of how people go about. But when you live that way, guys, you live a selfish life, it's empty and you're going to be empty and you're never going to feel, feel fulfilled. And, um, and it doesn't make sense because even Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive, but it's a supernatural thing. It really is a supernatural thing. And when you live a life like that, you're going to be so full of joy and you're going to be so filled with, um, with, with 
God. And, and God, it's the cool thing is, um, and I'm going to tell you a story. When you live a life where you're actually doing something to put down your own interests and putting other people's interests first, God is going to take care of your interests. He does. He, he sees and he cares and he does. And I mean, he even says in the Bible, if you give, it shall be given unto you. When you do that, God is going to bless you. He does. And we don't do it to get the blessing. But I tell you, when you live a life like that, for example, there was a time that um, we were doing um, teaching kids vacation Bible school in our homes. And, um, and so I volunteered to use my house as a home and I had to go around and bite people and I did everything, you know, did this. And so it's basically, you're laying down your time and your, your my house and, and we were doing that. And, um, at the same time, uh, we were, I was actually starting a, um, a childcare in my house. And, um, and so we had the, the vacation Bible school, the kids came, it was so fun. And yes, it took time and thing, but it was so fun for, so first of all, I felt really good afterwards. It's like, I saw all these kids they are having a great time. They came to know God. I was hugely happy just because of that. And that was so great, even though it took a lot of time and effort. Um, and, but the cool thing is, so the lady, the licensing lady that had to come into your house to make sure, okay, everything's okay. Yes. I give you the stamp. You can have kids come into your house. Okay. Um, she came. And she had actually told me what I needed to do ahead of time, you know, to prepare. But when she came, she told me what I needed to do for a small family child care. But we were actually going to have a large family child care with like 12 kids. And um, but God had her tell me the wrong thing on purpose, because if she had told me everything I had to do, I would have been like, no, I'm doing a small child care. My friend that I was helping, I would have said, you can just do your own thing. Um unfortunately, but so God kind of hit it. But when she came, she was like, oh, you're going to be a large family childcare. Um, you got to do a lot more stuff. Well, the problem was all the kids were coming the very next day. I needed to get that licensing so I could have the kids. And, um, and, and she could have literally said, sorry, you can't open. Um, and she could have just shut me down. But she said, she goes, did you have a vacation Bible school in this house the other week? I was like, oh yeah, I did. I did. We did. And she goes, I picked up my son from this house. A friend brought him here and he had a wonderful time getting to know God better, you know? And she was like, I tell you what, I'm going to just let you open and you go ahead and get everything done. And I just, as long as nobody comes and complains to me, I'm just going to pretend like, you know, I don't, you know, don't know you're here. <laughs> that was God. That was God's favor. He was literally making the way, taking care of me. You know, what are the odds that her son would have been at my house for that vacation Bible school? I just love God. How cool is that? He was taking care of me, even though I was serving him, he was looking out for me. And I have so many stories, guys, of that before, where when I think I'm doing something, God is actually taking care of me in me doing something. And he's going to look after you. He will look after what concerns you when you are looking after what concerns him. He will. And it doesn't mean you can't do ever do anything for yourself or, or, you know, or, or like take care of yourself. No, no, I'm not saying that you need to rest. You need to take care of yourself physically, you know, but when you live a life of servant, like, you know, on Sunday, what can I do at church or wherever you're at? Like when I, when I was working at the school and I was an office assistant, I just sit, didn't sit around when they didn't have something for me to do. I'd say, oh, can, can I um, go help in a classroom? I mean, just live a life always looking to be a blessing. God, pray, help me, help me see where I can be a blessing. When you live a life like that, you are going to shine so bright so other people can come to know God better. And you're going to be so fulfilled, guys, because... It, it, nothing compares to knowing God and being a part of what he does. I'm telling you. So if you feel unfulfilled in something, bored, that kind of stuff, start looking, start looking, start serving. Where can I be of help? And if you're feeling unfulfilled, I'm telling you, it's because you're probably not doing this. And so draw closer to God. Now, here's the other side of this. Don't be serving so much that you don't spend time with God because that comes first. If you're not getting recharged, refilled, filled with his love, then you're not going to have anything to give. So, cause that's what can be the other side of this is Satan will want you to be serving so much 
and thinking that spending time with God isn't important, but that's first, your time. Love God first, that's first. And then love others as yourself. So love, get that love and God wants to love on you. Spend that time with Him and then get to work. Where can you be a blessing and pour it out? And then God is just gonna pour back into you. And I know I can talk too much and sorry, but I'm telling you guys, it's supernatural because the world will say, it's all about me and me being the king and you bow down to me, blah, 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 blah. Emptiness, 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 emptiness. And that's why when people make it to the top, there's some people that have literally have even just taken their own lives or, or they're, they end up like doing drugs and other things because they're empty, because it's not fulfilling, guys. None of that is gonna fill you, none of it. So I'm gonna pray for you, gonna pray for me, and we need help. We do, we do, we need God's help, and you gotta be looking around. So Lord, I just thank you for my friends. They're here taking time, and I just pray you bless them for it, and I pray you help us to see Help us to see where we can serve, where you have us, and 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 to put forth the effort, give strength in us that we can serve God and show us, and um and bless the work of our hands for your glory, God, and let us see you at work through through us, God. We thank you, God, that you set the example. You did it. You didn't have to do it. You're the King of all kings. Thank you for setting the example. For always setting the example, God. We thank you, and we need your help with this. Help us be mindful to be a blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen. Hi, boys and girls, Pastor Anna here. Hey, we wanna ask you something. Would you like us to pray for you? If you have a prayer request, something you want us to agree with you to ask God for, email us at kids at lifesourcechurches.com. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We love you guys and we want to pray for you. So have a great week. Hey friends, I wanted to ask you, will you please like this video by clicking the thumbs up? And please hit the subscribe button if you like it. Then you can get all our videos. And also, can you feed me a worm, please? Thank you.